Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 15th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad today posted the solution to the quiz that he posted on April 1st. Congratulations to Alex for winning the Raspberry Pi among the correct solutions that were submitted for the quiz. If you participated in the challenge, or if not, if you just played a little bit with the PCAP, you now have the complete solutions. Turns out it started out with a Bazaar Loader, then went to Cobalt Strike, which was then in the end used to install the Anchor malware. So you had kind of two DNS-based command control channels in this particular sample. And I'm sure we'll do this again. Uh, maybe next month we'll, we'll see if Brad has another a good challenge like this uh, up his sleeves. And then we got a little bit of sort of post-patch Tuesday cleanup. First of all, Adobe also published four bulletins, one for Photoshop, for Adobe Digital Editions, Adobe Bridge, and RoboHelp. And the updates for Photoshop as well as Adobe Bridge uh, do address vulnerabilities that could lead to code execution. And then we got a new version of Google Chrome, Google Chrome 90, and the release was actually delayed by a day because just yesterday, yet another uh, Google Chrome zero day was posted to GitHub. This was the second one this week. So both of these vulnerabilities should be addressed in Google Chrome 90. There's also a new feature or change in default behavior in Google Chrome 90. It will now by default, if you don't specify a protocol, try to connect via HTTPS on port 443. Only if that fails, then it will connect via HTTP on port 80. Just be aware that this is not meant to be as strong as strict transport security. If you add the HTTP strict transport security header, then the browser will outright refuse to connect via HTTP and only allow connections via HTTPS. In this new default mechanism, it will fall back to HTTP if HTTPS is not available. So if an attacker, for example, wants to force you to the HTTP website, they now have to also launch some kind of denial of service or block access to the HTTPS version of the site. And SAP also delivered uh, new updates for its software suite uh, with uh, three hot news vulnerabilities or announcements as they call them and a number of high severity uh, patches. Remember, we just had about two weeks ago an announcement by CISA where they pointed out that they see an increase in attacks against SAP and similar products. We have always seen them as sort of at the top of the list when it came to new exploits and exploits are often released against these vulnerabilities within a couple of days so you really should not wait patching these vulnerabilities if you have any of these systems exposed to the internet. And Ak Sharma, a security researcher for Sonatype, wrote up some interesting malware targeting developers developing for Node.js. This uh, malware called Web Browserify after the component it is using is attempting to intimidate a very respected and often used uh, component called Browserify. The malicious web browser file upon install does download a large number of legitimate components itself, which is a sort of a common. It's actually hundreds of legitimate NPM components and about 120 megabyte of uh, components that it downloads. But with that, it also downloads and installs attempts to install a binary run.tar.exe is uh, the archive that's being downloaded. And then as the developer installs the component, it will prompt the developer for a root access in order uh, to install uh, this component uh, permanently, which is actually not a node component at all. It's just plain and simple malware that will then 
exfiltrate information and essentially install a backdoor. Now, while Browserify has millions of uh, downloads, a web Browserify looks like it got uh, luckily caught uh, pretty early on. It was published uh, two days ago. At least uh, that's the screenshot from Sonatype. So when they found it and was downloaded only 48 times. And the target here is the developer, not so much than uh, the user that is uh, using the software that includes this component. And then a shout out to the sans.edu students who competed last weekend in the National Cyber League Spring 2021 season. I believe they had over 900 teams total and the five sans.edu teams ranked in the top 100 with one team getting fourth place with a 100% accuracy for their answers. So uh, congratulations to all the teams and uh, they placed really well there. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.